week's lecture, but considering that today's tutes are on inheritance, we're going to start with that and he'll cover the stuff you missed um, on Thursday. Um, can everyone hear me? Am I loud enough? Good. Okay. So, he hasn't quite given me the correct slides either, so I'm having to go with these lovely 4x4 four four ones, so we'll have to do what we can. Um, right. So, <laughs> today we're going to be looking at inheritance. And it's... I can send it to both of them. They can be technologically savvy. Look at that. Um, it's probably one of the most important, one of the biggest things in Java. So you've probably, you've only really seen half of Java with objects and that sort of stuff. And inheritance sort of brings in the rest of the power of Java. So it's a, re it's a really, I find it's a really important concept and it makes the programming a lot more easy, a lot easier to do various different sorts of things. So we're going to try and take, we won't take it too fast because if you haven't seen this sort of stuff before, it can be slightly confusing if you're not used to it. So the things that we're supposed to be covering today is inheritance, subtyping, substitution, and polymorphic variables, which probably mean absolutely nothing to you, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a second. So probably we're going to start with a bit of a, um, a motivation for why we would have inheritance at all in, these sorts of, in, in a programming language like Java. So the example we're going to look at is the database of multimedia entertainment. Right. Uh, basically, we're storing, storing, trying to store a collection of CDs, DVDs, sort of multimedia. Like, think of, well, I run a Mac, so think of iTunes. So it stores lots of multimedia, CD, various different songs and that sort of stuff. And the idea is to just develop that sort of program. So. CDs, we're going to say, have various things like a title, artist, number of tracks, so on and so forth. DVDs have similar things, but they're also differences, so they have a director, whereas a CD doesn't. And we also want to be able to store this information, search it, and print it for later. So, any ideas of what we might need to do this? From what we've seen so far, what might you do if you were to implement this type of system? Any thoughts? Clearly, Claude and Malcolm don't ask lots of questions. Any thoughts? Nobody has any idea of what they might do to implement this system. Yep. What do you mean by that? Sorry? What do you mean by I still can't. What do you mean by that? Oh. This? No idea. Not a clue. We'll just ignore it for now. So, any ideas on how you would implement this system. No? Yes? Yep. Okay, very good. So, we could have, and if you've been paying attention, they're on the next slide. Um, we could have a class for CDs, and it would have all those various fields. So, it would have a title field, an artist, number of tracks, so on and so forth. We could also have a class for the DVD, and it would have the same sort of fields. And <laughs> it's not actually on this page, but we could have another class for the, the database. And that database, as suggested, could contain the array list of all of, an array list of all our CDs, an array list of all our DVDs. Makes sense. Okay? We've seen these sorts of things before. Now, ah. Uh, I have to zoom in. Okay. Um, we could also have <coughs> in the classes various methods. So we might have various set methods to, say, set a various comment or things that we might want to use. We might have get methods so we can get the various details. Make sense? Any questions? No? Okay. So, as we said, we can also have this database object. And it is an array list of our, of our collection of CDs and DVDs. Okay. We can also implement it in the code. I'm going to skip one of the slides because I don't think it's terribly useful. 
So if we implement it in the code, we, have, we see we have the fields at the top and we have the set methods and the get methods. And if we implemented the DVD source code, it would look almost the same as this. Except instead of having a title or an artist, which we may not have for a DVD, we replace it with the director field. So it's not all that difficult. But I guess the question is, Does anyone feel there's anything wrong with doing this? Or there's something very annoying with this particular method? Having a CD object and a DVD object as is. And even the way the database is set up. We're repeating ourselves a lot. We're repeating ourselves a lot, exactly. So, we've, sorry? <laughs> oh, sorry. Redundancy. It's very redundant, yes. So we've got the same code, the sa we're typing the same things. Even in, our even in the database object, we have we have to have two array lists, one for CDs and one for DVDs. And if we wanted to print the lists, and if we wanted to search the lists, we had essentially the same code. I think it's on one of the next slides. Um, there it is. It's up here. So if we wanted to search through the list to find a CD or a DVD, we have to have these two individual loops, and we have to duplicate all of our work. This is really annoying. And while, it's, while it would work, it's not something we like to do. I don't like... It. Actually, one of, my, one of my lecturers explained it like this. Explained it as finger karma. You have to type too much and you wear your fingers out and it all goes, all goes terribly badly. And then you make mistakes. So... As we can see, just, just to show you that I'm not making all this up. And Claude, Claude prepared these earlier. Um, it, does, it does have duplication. It makes maintenance very different. So if you wanted to add instead, oh, CD, DVD, what else? I know. I know. Say, say you wanted to add, I know, an old, some, some other new piece of technology. I don't know. Whatever they're going to come up with next. Blu-ray. Oh, no, that's the same as a DVD. Anyway, whatever they come up with next. Say you wanted to add that into it, you would have to create a new class, duplicate all that code again, and in all the methods that print out the stuff that we've got, all the methods that search the stuff that we've got, you'd have to add all of that extra code back in and basically copy and paste everything that you've got. So it makes maintenance very difficult. If you want to change anything, it's a lot of work to change it. And because of that, it means that you're more likely to introduce bugs. You're more likely to get something wrong. And People don't like it when you screw up their software. They really don't like it when, they, when you screw up their software. And code, code duplication. So, so the solution to this is inheritance. And essentially, what it means... <coughs> oh, it's too big. Back one. Essentially, what it means is, instead of having two classes, one for the CD, one for the DVD, you have, you introduce a third class, and that third class contains all of the common stuff. So, in this, in this situation, we have the item class, and it contains all of the common things that the CD and the DVD has. So, we've got a title, it's got their playing time, it's got whatever this got it filled, whatever the hell that means. It's got the comments. It also has all the common methods. So, you can set comments, and you can at get comments. You can set who owns it, you can get who owns it, you can print out the information. And that class contains all of the common information. And then, you then implement your CD and your DVD class. And these inherit from the item class. Now, what does it mean to inherit information? Well, it means that the CD and the DVD get all of the stuff that's in item. So it gets all of the fields, all of the methods, plus any that we decide to define in CD. Does that make sense so far? So <coughs> how many fields, I suppose, how many fields does the CD class have in this situation? How many fields would a CD object have? Six. 
6. Why would it have 6? Well, it gets the 4 from the item method plus the 2 that it defines. Likewise, the DVD would have 5 fields. Again, the 4 from the item and the, D and the director field that it introduced. How many methods would the CD class have? How many methods would you be able to call? Seven, exactly. Five from the item plus two from the CD. Does this make sense so far? Any questions? This, this, is, this, this, is the, this idea of inheritance is, is a concept. You need to make sure you understand the concept of inheritance before we go much further. So are there any questions at this stage? No? Good. So, just a bit of terminology. We call the item class the super class because it's super, I don't know. It's, it's the top level class. And likewise, CD and DVD are called subclasses because they are below or they inherit from the item class. Um, and as written, oh, where to go, where to go, next page. As written on this page, there, it just it explains what I just said before, which is that it inherits from the super class and it has all the, all the common elements. Can you just stop at one level in inheritance? Well, no. You could go on as much as you want. So, if we have a look at, say, Poodle, how many classes does Poodle inherit from? It inherits from three. It inherits from dog which in turn inherits from mammal, which in turn inherits, inherits from animal. So <laughs> it actually gets, so an object like Poodle would get all of the fields that are in dog, mammal, and animal. It would get all of the fields that are in, all of the methods, sorry, that are in those three classes as well. And you can, if you wanted to, you could keep going. So there really is no limit at how much you can inherit from. The only thing you can't do is introduce cycles into this. So you can't sort of have an animal inherit from a poodle. That would be stupid. That would create a cycle, and that just would break everything and completely screw it up. So, any other any questions so far? Yep. Can you extend a method from within a subclass? Can you extend a method? You can't extend a method you can overwrite them, and I think we're going to come to that in a bit. But, but yes, you can. It's called, it's called polymorphism. We'll come, to it, we'll come to it at the end of the lecture. But you, ca you can't extend it per se. You can replace it, but you can't sort of add extra code into it. So not in, not in that way. Any other questions? No? Okay. So <coughs> how do we actually do this in code? How would we write the Java code in order to do it? Well, if we come back to our DVD item, this is what we have. So the item class is as normal. So we've been doing this since week two, creating classes. You create it as normal. It's just a normal class. The change gets made in the subclasses. So, and you do that by adding this little phrase here, extends, which means you're going to subclass something and then the name of the class that you want to extend. So in this case, we want both CD and DVD to extend or inherit from item. So we say ex they extend item. And that's all you have to do. That's the only change you have to make in order to get this to work. OK. So just to show that, you can then define in the superclass, you can define your fields as normal. You can define your constructors as normal. You can define your um, methods as normal as well. So basic, basically when you're using inheritance, the superclass doesn't really ever change. You don't have to do anything special to the superclass to use inheritance. And that's, that's actually really nice, which means that the superclass never has to know what things are extending it, and, and nor should it. So if you have an item, it doesn't actually know what, whether it's 
a CD or a DVD or just an item, or, any, or if there's anything else below it. It only ever knows about itself or anything it inherits from. And all the changes then get made in the subclass, which is here. So if you want to introduce new fields, you simply define those new fields. If you want to introduce new methods, you just define those new methods. You don't have to duplicate any of the... Uh, this is going to be painful. If we go, to, if we go back to the... Uh, uh, we go back to the superclass. In the subclass, you don't have to rewrite all of these things in the subclass to have them redefined. They will, they will be there automatically, and Java will take care of that for you. You simply have to write in the, super, in the subclass all of the new things that you want to define, all of the new methods, all of the new uh, constructors, so on and so forth. Okay. So, there are no, no other questions? No? Nope. Okay. I guess the next thing that we're going to have a look at is how do you, if we've written all this code, how do you actually create one of these objects? How do you construct an item? How would you construct a CD or a DVD? So, <coughs> we've, we'll, we've seen before that when you construct an object, you have to call a constructor and you initialize all the fields. And any fields that you don't initialize get automatically initialized by Java. Right? So, can't, so, can't quite think of an example, but if we, have, there's, if we have a look, if we're just constructing, say, the item, we could construct it in this way. It has a single constructor, it takes two parameters, and it sets, the whole but it sets all the fields to all their various bits of information that we want. And if we happen to leave out a field, Java would take care of that for us and initialize it to some sane value, whether usually zero or null if it's an object. So <coughs> if we wanted to construct an item, we simply do it in the same way. The question is, what happens when we want to construct a CD? Remember, a CD inherits from an item. So if we wanted to construct a CD, what would we have to do? Any thoughts? If we wanted to construct a CD which inherits from or extends an item object, what would we have to do? Sorry? Well, yeah. We would have to initialize all of the fields in the CD and all of the fields in the item, right? Because a CD is an item, you'd have to initialize all those fields. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. That's slightly annoying. If you, have to, if you would have to, in your CD constructor, do all of that, it's slightly annoying. So instead what you can do is in your subclasses, <coughs> oh no, I need this one. You can call a constructor of your superclass. So if you go back one slide, we see here that item has a constructor. It takes a title and a playing time. And in our subclass, we can call that constructor. And we do that by using the keyword super. It means our superclass. And what this says is when I'm constructing a CD object, instead of manually me having to go and update and initialize all the fields and all of the information in my superclass, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to let my superclass take care of that for me. So I'm going to call its constructor, give it the arguments that it wants, and it will go and initialize all the fields for item. Then, after I've done that, I will then initialize just the fields for me. Does that make sense? 
Are there any questions about how that's working? No? Okay. <coughs> the only proviso with using this is that you have to call super as the first line of code. So you can't swap these lines around. So you couldn't initialize my own fields and then call super. Java won't let you do that. It comes down to the order in which it creates and instantiates, instantiates memory. But, and what that means is you have to call the super class, the constructor of your super class first, and then take care of yourself. Yes? That's a very good question. Um, no, it doesn't. So, it just makes one object. So that's a very, very good question. If when we construct a CD and we call the superclass, it doesn't make two objects. It doesn't make an item object and a CD object and link them in some way. It creates one huge object which contains all of the information from item and all of the information from a CD. Yeah. That's a very good question. Any other questions? No. Okay. Um, it's a bit of information here. I was going to ask this question, but it's on the slide. You always have to have a superclass call. So you can't not have it. Um, kind of makes sense, really, that you can't just create a CD object without doing the stuff to create an item object. You have to have it do its own work. So you have to have a call to the super and constructor. If you don't write one, the compiler will put one in for you. And the constructor that it puts in is called the default constructor. So I don't know if you've noticed before is that sometimes when you write an object, you don't have to put a constructor in. Have you noticed that you can do that? Maybe, maybe we'll show you. Um, Ah, oh, that's assignment too. Don't want that. New. No, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Ah, oh, damn it. Blue Jay is not my friend. New project. Lecture. Okay. So let's get rid of all this crap. Ah, uh, where have I gone? Where have I gone? Right. So, <coughs> can everyone see this? Uh, maybe I could, can I make this a bit? Ah. Okay. So, if I compile this class and I put in the return types because I'm silly. and I can't type. I can compile this class. What do you notice about this class? Sorry? It has no constructor. I haven't written a constructor. And I can use an object without a constructor. Um, no, I don't want you. I want this one. So I can say, new item. I can set the title to whatever I want. I can get that title and it comes back as whatever I said it was. So I don't have to have a constructor. I don't have to write a constructor for an object. Does that mean a constructor doesn't exist? No. A constructor does exist. And the one that exists is called the default constructor. And It looks like this. That's what it looks like. The constructor takes no arguments and it sets none of the fields. Okay? 
Likewise, I could actually write a constructor, a default constructor myself. So I might choose to set the title to some default title or whatever. And this is also a default constructor, but I've specified it now. So basically, a default constructor is one that doesn't take any parameters. Now, what does this have to do with subclassing and all that sort of stuff? Well, um, let's put a print statement in. In item constructor. Okay. So if I <coughs> create a new class, class, or we could CD. Do 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 do. do, do. CD extends item, right? Let's put a constructor in CD. Okay. Let's just make sure this compiles. It's really embarrassing when things don't compile, even when they're really simple. So. If I was to, <coughs> pardon me, we can now see that CD extends item, by the way. If I was to create a new CD, knowing from what we've just seen about how constructors work, what will I get out, what will be printed out on the screen? So I've got a print statement in CD. I've got a print statement in, well, that's annoying. Get rid of this. No, I can't get rid of it. Oh, fantastic. I can. So I've got a print statement in CD. I've got a print statement in item. If I was to create a CD, what would the output be? Yep. Why? Exactly. Because, because I haven't specified in CD a, super, a call to the, my superclasses constructor, which constructor will get called? The default constructor. Which is this one, the one with no parameters. So because I haven't specified it myself, Java will call it for me. So just to show that I'm not lying to you, let's do it. I don't know if you can read that. Now you can read that. But here we can see that, in fact, we do indeed get both lines of output. So despite the fact I haven't called one myself, it will call it for me. So if you don't specify a superclass constructor, it will call it for you, provided that you have a constructor that takes no parameters. If you don't have a constructor that takes no parameters, like this, uh, 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 uh. if I do this instead, and I try to run it again, oh. compile, we now get a compile error. And that compile error is telling me that, and I don't know if you can see it all the way down the bottom here, but the compile error is telling me that there is no constructor in the item object that takes zero parameters. There's no default constructor. So Java is now complaining and saying, hey, you're being stupid. You need to make a call to the super constructor. And if I do that, everything should now be happy. And it is. And I can run everything again, and it all works. OK? Any questions with how the constructing of these objects work? No? Good. You're all understanding it. That's excellent, because it's in today's tube. So it's good that you're understanding it. OK.
I don't know why that's in the slides, but we'll go through, we'll see what's in the slides. So, as we can see, and I'm not going to zoom in on this one, as we can see, we can, we can have as many classes that we want to inherit from things, and you can go in all sorts of weird and wonderful ways, adding as many fields and methods as you want. So, as, as we've said, we do this, we do inheritance, and we do, we do inheritance basically for these four reasons. Avoid duplication so we can reuse code, it makes it easy to maintain, and it gives us a lot more power. And it's really, really nice. Okay? So, the next question is, remember in the system we were trying to implement a database. And if you remember back to when we started using the database, we had an array of CDs, an array of DVDs. Right? We don't need to do that anymore, because... CDs and DVDs are both items, right? So, instead of having an array list for both of them, we can have one array list for all of them. And that's what we can see here. So, in the top of our database, we no longer have to have two array lists, we just have one. What is an array list of it? Well, it's an array list of items. The question is, can I do this? Can I say, this is what I would like to say, can I say this? Could I add, well I can add an item to the, to the database, well, what if, I, what if I wanted to say, instead of add item, I change this and I said, add DVD, or add CD, and I change this item to a CD, and then I added that into the list. Could I do that? So instead of adding something of item, of a class type item, I want to add something of class type CD or DVD. Could I do that? Would it be nice to do that? Yes, because the CD is an item, a DVD is an item. Well, it turns out that you can do that. And the reason you can... Come back to me. Go to the next one. The reason you can do that is a thing called subtyping. So, <coughs> it's actually explained down here better. If you've been in my shoots, I actually would have talked about this already. I don't know if there's been, how much has been covered in lectures, but classes in Java define something called a type. So, You've seen types before. You've seen an int, you've seen string, or chars and strings and those sorts of things. Classes are just types. That's why in your code you could write something like this, cd whatever. The reason that you can write, see, you can create a field of a class or a type cd, of a class cd is because classes are types. They work in a very similar way to, say, an integer does. As an integer is a type, a class also creates a type. Does that make sense so far? So, where is it? There it is. When you have subclasses, you then have a thing called subtype. And what that means is it's, in, in the same way that you have the hierarchy of classes, you have this hierarchy of types. And what that means is that anything that is the subtype of another one, you can replace them with. So if we go back up to here, <coughs> if we have a method that takes an item, something of type item, we can give it anything that is of that type or any subtype of it. Yes? Okay? So that's why we could say something like this. We could create a new DVD, an object that is of type DVD, and give it to this add item method. Why? Because DVD is a subtype of item. 
Questions? No? Have confused looks on people's faces. I'm just wondering if everyone's getting this. Yes? Cool. Okay. So this is, it's really, really nice and really powerful. It's called substitution. So you can substitute one type for anything that is a subtype of it. Okay. <coughs> In the same way, you can do it with variables. So I have no idea why Claude decided to change his example, but he has. But let's, just, let's assume that we have a vehicle, a cycle, a car, and a bicycle. I can create one object of type vehicle, which is a vehicle. I can create a second object of type vehicle, but I can create using a car. And I can also create using a bicycle. Because, again, because these two are subtypes, or they're subclasses, of vehicle. Make sense? Good. Okay. Where are we up to? Let's see that. Let's see that. All right. Actually, been making, been going really well. Oh dear, oh dear, I've lost where I am. Okay. I mentioned this word before, and that is polymorphism. I think it was in response to one of your questions there. So, <coughs> classes on types are polymorphic. That means they can change depending upon the situation in which you're using them. So, if we go back to, or you can use this diagram. In our database, we have an array list of items, and ex expect something of type item. And we can put in it CDs and DVDs. But while these objects exist within these lists, they, are actually think, they actually think of themselves no longer as being a CD or a DVD, they only think of themselves as being an item, because it's a list of items. That's what, kind of what polymorphism means. It means that your object can morph between the various different things in its class hierarchy, depending upon the situation in which they're in. Again, if we go back to the vehicle example, V2 is a vehicle, not a car. It's of type vehicle. So even though we created it with a car, when it is being used in this V2 object, it thinks about itself only as being a vehicle. And what that means is that you can't actually call, if car had methods and fields that exist in it, even though it, within the object they're there, because it thinks it's a vehicle, you can't get to them, you can't call them, you can't do anything on them. And that's what it means as polymorphism. It means that while <coughs> in this situation the car object thinks about itself as a vehicle. I probably didn't explain that in the best way, but are any, do people have questions on that, this concept? That an object can change the way it views itself based upon its current context? No? Yeah. Sorry, what do you mean by the reverse? Yep. Um, is it obviously that if you created a vehicle with a car, you can't call, because it's a vehicle, you can't call Yeah, exactly. Car. So, so you actually have to create the car. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So let's say, let, let's do that. Let's quickly do an example. Um, so <coughs> let's put a method in here. I don't know. Void blah. Um, all 
Oh, that's not going to work. That's going to work. Right. So I create an item using a CD. As we've seen, it's kind of the same example. Now I want to, now because we know it's a CD, CDs have a blah method. Surely I can call the blah method on it, right? Surely I can do this if I spell correctly. Can I? No. I can't because even though I created this object using a CD, while, because I define this as an item, it only thinks of itself as an item. So this object has morphed from being a CD to, thinking of it, to now thinking of itself as only an item. So I can't call any of its methods, I can't call any of, get it to any of its fields. So, does that answer your question? Cool. If I change this into a CD, it's now all good. It's now all happy. If I can spell. OK? Cool. But here's, my, here's a question. <laughs> what, if I did what if I did this situation? What if I change this back again? What if I set something up so that I had this as an I had a CD, but its type was item, but I desperately desperately wanted to call this blah method. It would be nice if there was a way to do that, wouldn't it? It would be nice if there was a way to say, if I desperately have to, if I really, really want to call a method on this class, and I know it's a CD, that I can get to that method. And the way we do that is called casting. Now he's going back to the cars again. So as, as we've seen, oh, oh dear, what's going on? Okay. The motivation is is uh, we've got a vehicle, we created the car, we can assign the vehicle to the car, but we can't assign. We can do, we can say a vehicle equals a car. These, by the way, these are really badly named variables. You know, you know when we talk about style? Do as I say, not as I do. It's a bad. All right, you can, you can make a vehicle be a car, but you can't do it this other way around. Because a car is not a vehicle, right? I don't know why we got that there. Anyway, casting. <laughs> I know why we got this, but it's, it's, it's not what I'm trying to talk about now. Casting. This is where, if I had something of type vehicle, but I knew it was a car, I could convert it back into a car. And I can do that by putting the name of the type or the class that we want with round brackets before it. And then I can get it into the format of a car. So if we go to our example up here, I could cd cd equals, I could do this. Okay? Yes. Here. Okay, it would be. It could be. But let's let's go back to our database. So the database had an array list of what? What was the array list? It was of items. If it's only got an array list of items, but I really wanted to call the CD methods, then I would need to do stuff like this. So, I guess casting isn't nice. It's, 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 I don't like casting. And if you can avoid it, then yes, you should avoid it. But if you can't avoid having to do it, there, it is a way around it. Yeah. Okay? So, this all works. And if I run it, and how do I run it? I think I have to just have to create... A new item. Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh dear. Uh, I've created. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh no. I've created loops. <laughs> you know how I said not to create loops in your code? 
I created a loop in the code. I can fix it. I have the power. There is the technology to do it. No, that didn't fix it. Ah! Grr. Go away. Third time lucky. No. Oh, no. No, that, no it worked. There it is. See the item? It just displayed the code, it displayed the page with all. Anyway, it worked. The point is, it works. <laughs> the point is, you can do this. But what I wanted to quickly come and show you, because we're running out of time is, oh, let's see if I can do this really quickly. DVD. DVD. Crap, 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 crap. Extends item. Okay, compile. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. No, this is what I want. Okay. Will this work? Will this work? Well, here are two questions. Will this program compile? Yes, this program will compile. Why will it compile? Well, is a DVD an item? Yes. Is it possible to typecast an item into a CD? Well, yes. Is it possible to call the blah method on a CD? Well, yes, it's, it's there, it's obvious, right? But will this code run? No. Why? Is a DV, DVD a CD? Oh, no. So this is the problem with casting, and this is why you have to be really careful with using it, and if, as the lady up the back pointed out, if at all possible you can avoid it, you should, is because you can actually cast any object into another object. I could have called this a... I could change if I had, like, fruit. I could change a DVD into a, cast it into a fruit if I wanted to. The compiler will let you do it, but it won't work if you try to run the code. And hopefully, if I've done this right, we will get an, we'll get an error. Yes. We get an error. It says it right down the bottom if you can't read. DVD cannot be cast into CD. Okay? So that's the problem with casting. Um, we're out of time, I believe, but we're almost, we're almost at the end. So hopefully Claude will be back on Thursday and he can finish off the debugging stuff and finish off this stuff on inheritance and I'll tell him where we got up to. All right. Thank you.